Welcome to the ball box. Whoa, 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 to the ball box, yeah. Talking about sports and stuff, ball box. Come on now and sing it with me, ball box, yeah. Sports, sports, sports. What's up, everybody? You are tuned into the ball box where we go outside of the box to bring you what's inside. I'm your host, as always, Vaughn Druin. Here with me today, my co-host, Brinkley Hill. Brinkley, what's up? Hello, how are you? I'm very good. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Great. Awesome. That's what we want here at the ball box. So uh, what we're going to do today, of course, is look at some outside of the box sports, uh, unorthodox, if you will. Um, today, we're going to be talking specifically Winter Olympics. With the Winter Olympics uh, rearing and ready to go now uh, with all the wonderful athletes from all the cold countries around the world and some from the warm countries. Absolutely. They, they get in there somehow. Yep. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of our favorite sports from the Winter Olympics uh, and dive into them. Sports that you won't see much of at all outside of the two or three weeks that they're playing at the Olympics every four years. So, yeah, you ready to get into some... Some weird Olympic sports, Brinkley? I'm so ready. I'm very excited. All right, let's get it. All right, so uh, first on the list we got today, skeleton. Brinkley, what do you know about skeleton? Um, first off, I, it was so hard to find anything about skeleton racing outside of mainstream media in the Olympics. Um, but basically, it's just a frozen track that people have a little rinky-dink skeleton <laughs> like sled and, um, well, actually, I have some fun facts. First of all, this year's course is over a mile long. Okay. And it drops 397 feet. It has 16 curves. There's a 360 curve, so it goes all the way around. And um, do you know how fast they go down these tracks? I do, but I want you to say it. 80 miles an hour. Over 80 miles an hour sometimes. Yep. Um, which is a good time to drop in. Do you know that for the Summer Olympics, they rate how dangerous um, it is by injuries. And for mm. Winter Olympics, it's the death rate. Oh, that tells you a lot right there. It does. Woo. It does. But what, um, do you know what it is for skeleton? The death rate? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not that that's a good <laughs> thing. I'm just very interested. I actually did not Google it, but um, I okay. do know that multiple of the U.S. skeleton racers have had like spine and neck injuries mm. from their sport. Yeah, I can definitely see that happening. Did you also know that of the three uh, sled, uh, luge sports, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call them, it's the slowest? I know. Isn't that crazy? But this is also the one where you're the least protected. So it's I would hope I it's most the dangerous. slowest. Yeah, yeah, for real. Um, it's only 80 miles an hour going head first down an icy, icy slope. Only 80 miles an hour. That's not that bad. Yeah, easy. Um, but yeah, so... I mean, I think it's a really interesting sport. Obviously, I mean, just the visual of someone just bombing a hill head first, no, you know, no visible padding really, um, down like this uh, frozen wild waves <laughs> course, uh, and using only their, their body weight to, to move around and pick up speed or break. Uh, I know they drag their toes to break yep. a little bit. Um, but breaking's not really that necessary because you're just trying to go as fast as humanly possible. Um, and it's just, it's, cr it's pretty crazy to watch. Um, I know for Olympics, it's relatively new. Uh, it, it did. Um, so it was in the Winter Olympics in 1928 and 1948. And that's only because it was in, um, I think it was Germany, maybe? And that's where it, the, the skeleton racing started. And so um, those two years, that's where the Winter Olympics were. And then mm. it's now, uh, it's been in the Winter Olympics constantly since 2008. Yeah, which I didn't realize it was so recent, like as a, I know, every, every year edition. Um, but, I mean, it seems, <laughs> it's a simple yet elegant sport. Um, you know, it's very dangerous. It's brutal. Uh, and um, it's also fun watching them get the running start and yep. and hop on it. Like they have to get the position perfectly. It's it's a whole oh, yeah. tactical uh, skill that uh, I'm sure it takes many years to master, uh, as most of these sports do. But yeah, I mean, I think it's a really cool sport. Uh, all the sled sports are really interesting. 
just because the premise is so simple, but there's so much complexity uh, behind the scenes. Like if you ask the athletes, what goes into a good a good run on there? They could, you know, list a oh million different things. And, and if you watch them, like, um, you know, post run, they'll say, oh, like I over rotated my right shoulder on this turn, and they'll show um, like the replay, and you can barely yeah. see that move. Yeah, you can barely see the move. It's insane. Yeah, I got a lot of respect for that. Um, so with that being said, skeleton. Uh, only been in the Olympics since 2002, but has a pretty storied history coming out of Switzerland. A uh, lot of great athletes from that area. But who do you think is your GOAT? Um, if you're going to talk about what country in the Olympics is GOAT, then I'm going to go with the U.S. Um, they've won three gold, four silver, and one bronze in the Olympics overall. Pretty good. Um, and then if we are going to break it down by person, um, the Latvian skeleton king, as I like to say, is Martin Dukers, and he's just an insanely decorated athlete when it comes to skeleton. He yep. ha is an eight-time international bobsled and ske uh, skeleton federation world cup winner. Um, he's won 50 times on the mm. circuit, and he's a five-time world champ, nine-time nine-time European champ, and he has two silver silver medals. And this year, he's going for the gold. Mm. Love it. Um, yeah, uh, I, I can really get with that. Um, How do you say his name? Martin Dukers. Dukers. Du hopefully it's not Dukers. Dukars. Um, pride of Latvia. Um, I also wanted to throw out Tina Herman from Germany. Yes. Uh, she is still going strong. Uh, she has four world titles, most mm -hmm. of all female skeleton athletes. Um, and a total of 20 gold medals in international competitions, <laughs> World Cups, championships, all of that. Um, so Thank shout you. out to um, Tina Herman from Germany for, for that as well. So yeah, skeleton, great sport. You guys should check it out. It'll be on consistently during these Winter Olympics. Check out NBC. And it's on USA Network, I just found out. Really? Yeah, which I actually have at home. So I'm going I'm to yeah. I'm check that out. So, so yeah. Everyone tune in to USA. Yeah, shout out USA Network. Uh, they didn't sponsor us, but they should. <laughs> it's coming soon. The collab with USA Network, the channel that brings you all those like old superhero movies. And tune in next week. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna be simulcast <laughs> USA. on USA Network next year. <laughs> Just watch. Um, anyways, moving on to our next sport. Yes. Biathlon. So a, a lot of people probably think like running, biking, and swimming when they hear something like that. Yep. Uh, but in the, in the um, terms of Winter Olympics, mm -hmm. we're talking about cross-country skiing and shooting rifles. Yes. What more could you want? What do you know about biathlon, Um, uh, The biathlon is um, an extremely broad range of events. Um, there's women's, men's, mass start, short, long, it's insane. Yeah, sprint, um, relay, team, yes. um, pursuit, which is like a, like a NASCAR type yes. thing where everyone like is positioned from their last race. I like that one a lot, too. Yes. Um, I was reading up on that. Um, is that mass start that you're talking about that was added in 2006? No, that was a pursuit, oh. which is also in the Olympics. There's five of them in the Olympics. I think sprint, individual, pursuit, relay, and the mass start 30 is like the, the base one that yes. you're talking about. Um, the mass start is super cool because it takes the men from the 15 kilometer and the women from the 12.6 and they throw the top 30 in um, when it comes to times and then they send them all out with four shooting stages. So I thought that was really cool because they can um, women ag against each other. But the biathletes do shoot from two positions. They shoot from standing and prone, which is laying down. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you've ever, uh, I don't know if you've ever shot a rifle or have you? Uh, not the kind of rifle they're, no, they're doing, no. But in general, when you hold it, like after, like you have to like be so careful with your breathing and oh yeah yeah, because so you know so you don't right. shake it and because you don't want to hit the target. Yeah, and so I having see. to cross country ski and then shoot a target kind of blows my mind. Yeah, it makes me think that they do a lot of meditation in their training. A lot of like breath training too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um. But as for that, do you want to jump into the goats? Uh, yeah, I mean, real quick, I just want to say, no, like, it. it's just 
it's just such a weird sport. Like, <laughs> it seems so archaic in a way to just <laughs> just ski up a mountain and then shoot something. It's like, <laughs> I don't know, it seems like some weird recreational sport, but it, it is a very storied Olympic winter sport that people take very seriously, that they train, you know, three and a half years for to get to mm -hmm. um, at the highest competition. And they do competitions all year, obviously especially in Northern uh, Europe and, and that area. But it's amazing that it's still so prominent um, and so well-respected. And I don't think it's going anywhere. You know? No. There's, um, yeah, I could never imagine cross-country skiing up a hill just to, to shoot again. And honestly, wow. like, I do think it should be a protected sport in the Olympics. I think it's kind of what the Olympics is. So, um, yeah, 100%. So props to the biathletes mm -hmm. for sure. All right, yeah. So, with that being said, yeah, let's go into the <laughs> goat talk. Who's your goat? Um, so, once again, if we're talking country-wise in the Olympics, um, I'm going to go with Germany. Um, they have 52 medals, 19 of them being gold. And then Germany and Norway with 41 um, medals overall and the 16 gold. Mm. As for my specific goat athlete. I'm going to go with the Norwegian athlete Ole Einar Bjørndalen, who leads the medal count with 13 total medals, and then um, Rico Gross of Germany with eight. Mm, okay. Um, you have a different one, don't you? I do. Uh, yeah, we were kind of looking at different angles for this goat er, um, conversation, and there is a lot to look at when you're talking about it. I mean, you talk about like record speeds and and longevity um, or like consecutive streaks uh, of dominance? Well, this one is such a hard one to compare as well just because it's, um, it there's like, like you said, there's different like lengths that they ski and Yeah, and the, the different like events that. is like, you can be dominant in one event and horrible in the other. Yeah. And so to have I think like an over overarching. I 15 types of biathlon events. So comparing wow. all <laughs> those athletes from all those events is definitely going to be opinionated. Yeah. I guess there's a lot of ways to ski and shoot. <laughs> that's that's pretty crazy. Okay, um, so who's your goat? Yeah, so my, my goat, uh, I went with uh, the Frenchman, uh, Martin For Forcade. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I went with him because he has, uh, he's often referred to by people who call the sport as one of the goats, if not the sure. goat. Um, he has seven crystal globes, which is World Cups, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and he has the most all-time consecutive world championships, which I believe was 2011 to 2018. <sighs> so, I mean, uh, the stretch of dominance uh, right there is hard to overlook. Um, and then in total, five Olympic golds, two silvers, um, 13 golds, and 28 total medals at world championships for biathlon in a number of different events, the sprint and the relay and the mass start. Um, and just as a note, he's the most successful French Olympian of all time. So really? if you want to know what France is dominant in, uh, biathlon is what they're <laughs> dominant in. And it's because of this man, Martin Fourcade. Fourcade what did I say? Fourcade? Would you say he's the Michael Phelps of the Winter Olympics for France? I think he, for France, I mean, I think he's the most successful, but um, I don't think he's that f far ahead of his competition to be compared to Michael Phelps, just because there's a lot. It's a more um, uh, packed conversation when you talk about goat. So that's why I say that. But yeah. All right, so that's biathlon. Go check that one out, too. It's really interesting. Um, it's long. I'd be a little boring, but no, the shooting part's fun. Uh, okay, now let's get to Brinkley's favorite sport here. This should be everyone's favorite sport of Facts. the Winter Olympics. It's so awesome. Why don't you go ahead and introduce it? All right. Curling. Um, Curling, baby. It is one of the oldest team sports in the world, originating in Scotland. Um, and, and when, Brinkley? When was it originated? Actually, I don't have that written down, but a long time ago. 1500s. Yep. Yep. It's one of the oldest, <laughs> oldest team sports. It's crazy. Like, how can you keep playing something for that long and still, like, find new ways to play it? It's crazy. Another reason I love it. That's probably why it's so great. It's because it's been battle tested over 600 years or whatever. It really has. That's why it's everyone's favorite. Exactly. Every single one watching. It's your new favorite sport. 
So, yeah. like I said, it's a team sport. There's mixed teams, men's teams, and then women's teams. Yep. Um, there's ten rounds and eight stones each round. Uh, usually, each team member throws two rocks, and then the skip or the captain goes last. Um, and then if you're ever watching curling and you hear someone yelling, that's usually the captain or the team telling yeah. them um, to sweep because it sweeps the brush away. It melts the ice, so it'll go faster. Or it'll be like, boo, or just whatever. Yeah, the most so underrated fun. part of curling, I think, is the is the verbal abuse coming from teammates. <laughs> that's all, that always spices it up a little bit. It really is. Um, and then curling as well was only added to the Olympics in 1998. So right. it's also a pretty recent sport in the Winter Olympics. Yeah. Only 500 years after its inauguration as a sport. <laughs> but they have a Doc very, time. very strict, um, like, team. Like, outside of the Olympics, they mm. have the Curling Federation or something like that. And I actually um, – hold on. I have a screenshot on my phone, but I have to read this to you <laughs> because they have each country – um, buys in to this like federation, this team, mm. and it said that Armenia, the Armenian Curling Federation, was suspended for failure to pay subscriptions, and they've recently been expelled from the federation. And the Polish Curling Association was suspended for not resolving disputes within the Poland Ministry of Sport. Dang. I know. So curling is strict. You don't want to mess with curling. Don't, yeah, don't be late on your rent if you want to <laughs> play <laughs> curling. No, dog. not like at all. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Um, do you think it's like a, a preppy sport in that way then? Like, um, I know back home that we had one curling place, whatever, your factory, um, where you could play, and yes. it was a pretty substantial like subscription membership yes. fee. Oh, yeah. Does it kind of have that vibe to it, you think? I think so. I think it's one of those sports that – you're either in or you're out, and you're completely dedicated to it. And but it's out there too. You wouldn't expect it to be so hardcore, but yeah. I really think it is. Yeah, I guess they they keep a tight circle, and mm -hmm. you know that's uh, I respect that. That's very cool. Uh, I feel like with a lot of winter sports, um, when it comes yeah. to the Winter Olympics, it's very niche. Yeah, I think so. And curling I mean more than any of them. Yeah, facts. Uh, and in a lot of ways, like there's just there's only so many um, environments you can even play them mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. So right there, that excludes like half the world from a lot of these sports. Yep. Uh, even though, as we mentioned, there's uh, teams, you know, you know, manifesting their way into the into the games. Uh, Africa yep. has a record number of countries competing in, in this year's Winter Olympics, really? which I love to see. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot to be a lot of ground to be made up, and. Uh, yeah, but I like the competition level in curling. So whatever they're doing, it's working for them because uh, all the players in the Olympics are obviously really good oh at yeah. what they do. Um, so, I mean, speaking of someone who has been in the sport their whole life uh, and indoctrinated, let's talk a little bit about your GOAT <laughs> for curling. So um, really quickly, I'm going to break it down uh, country-wise because sure. the only way that you can break this down is that Canada's the best at curling. Um, absolutely. In the, you know, since 1998, they've won 11, or si 11 total medals, six gold, three silver, two bronze. Um, mm. And then Sweden and Switzerland are right behind them with eight and then seven medals. Um, and a special, special little, just going to throw it out there. Um, the U.S. actually won their first Olympic medal in 2006, and the U.S. men kind of stole the last Olympics, um, the men's team, and they're the defending champ this year. So if you're looking for something to watch in curling this year, watch the U.S. men's team um, because that's going to be a great competition. Nice. Um, if, we're gonna down, if we're going to break down, yeah, if we're going to break down the actual goats um, from Alberta, Kevin Martin, um, he has four Breers, which is the annual Canadians Men Curling Championships. Mm -hmm. He has one uh, world championship, one gold, and 18 Grand Slams, which is basically just um, a series that's part of the uh, annual world tour. Um, his career started in 1991, um, and he won back-to-back -back Breers 2008 and 2009. And he won, or he led the, t um, the Canadian men's team to have a perfect record in the Winter Games uh, the last time he was in Canada. In oh, nice. So he, and I think that was like the only men's curling team to ever have a perfect record in the Olympics. 
Um, so you have to throw him out there. And then Glenn Howard from Ontario, uh, four Breer wins, 16 Grand Slams, and he's won a lot of World Series. Dang. Oh, Canada's the way to go if you're rooting for uh, the Yankees of curling, I guess. If you don't want to wait around for an underdog. Canada's a good look. Uh, good old Kmart. Uh, I just want to throw out another one uh, because Sweden is currently really, really good at curling. Yep. Um, and the greatest curler in Sweden, Nicholas Eden. Uh, if you look him, look him up online, every picture of him is really intense. Like he looks like he's about to slit your throat with, with a stone. Uh, he's like, like Dracula. Or something. When they throw their legs, they just stare. Oh, it's so <laughs> intense. I mean, like you're thinking of like the line that you have to get it and like, and a lot of them curl it. Yep. Curl it, but curl it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, and with the brooms, it's, it's crazy. Curling's awesome. But yeah, Nicholas Eden from Sweden, um, uh, widely regarded as the best skipper of all time uh, and the only one to win five straight world championships as a skipper. So props to him on that. Um, and currently the best curler in the best curling country, like like right now, as Brinkley said, Canada, probably the greatest of all time, but um, Sweden's up there. And then he has eight world uh, championships, two Olympic medals, and seven Euro championships. So um, shout Very him out. But athlete. Yeah, um, but I think, I think uh, old bear Kevin Martin <laughs> might <laughs> yeah. be the man for that one, so. That is your goat of curling. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. So that does it for this section of the ball box. Uh, if you just stick around, we'll be right back with our game show portion. It's going to be a lot of fun, so stay tuned. Welcome to the ball box. Whoa, 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 to the ball box, yeah. Talking about sports and stuff, ball box. Come on now and sing it with me, Ball Box, yeah! Sports, sports, sports. Welcome, everybody, to the Ball Box Game Show, the unlicensed, nondescript game show accompanying the Ball Box program on Wazoo Sports Network, brought to you by Cable 8 Productions. So today, we are live from the Cable 8 Studios in Pullman, Washington, beautiful as always, with me, are our three beautiful contestants. Guys, would you like to introduce yourselves very quick? I'm Mati, also known as the Banana Guy. I'm Brinkley Hill. I'm Madeline Armstrong, happy to be here. Awesome, I'm very happy to have you guys on today. I think it's gonna be a great show. Uh, and just to be clear, we're gonna get into some sports trivia here. Um, one might say it looks like Jeopardy, but trust me, it's nothing like it. What is Jeopardy? Exactly. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is take a look at the Ungus game board, and you guys are gonna choose the first topic. So today, we have our topics, whatever you wanna call them, topics. Uh, yeah, topics. Mm -hmm. Mutual hate, that ain't it, coach. Cold sports, don't quote me on this. And as we do every week, hey yo, who that? So, starting us off today, pick a number between one and ten. Eight. I was gonna say eight. Three. Four. Off to a first win. I said three. You said four? Mm -hmm. Okay, Madeline, you will pick first. All right. the number. There you go. It's five. Oh. Um. I gotta speak into the microphone here. So All right. Cast category. Me. That ain't it, coach. For one hundred. All right. That ain't it, coach. For one hundred. Let's see. How this goes. This coach decided to throw the ball on the one yard line oh, in Super wait. Bowl 49. Brinkley. She's buzzing early. Who is Pete Carroll? You are correct. I think we all remember that one. All right. 100 points to Brinkley to start us off. And so we can buzz in early. Oh, crap. We're allowed to buzz in early? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Buzz in when you know. Okay. All right. I thought we were waiting. No, I mean, you don't have, I mean, if you want the whole question, it would be sure. like wise to, but if you already know it, then sure. hop on, okay. why not? Fair so, um, yeah, we're high budget, so that's how we're gonna <laughs> remember which ones we did, because, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, man. Okay, Brinkley, you have the board. What would you like to go with? I would like cold sports. 
sport for a hundred. You got it. This sport is like frozen shuffleboard. Mati. What is curling? You got it. Mati is on the board. <laughs> I'm already I'm already so bad at this. That was one hundred or two hundred? One hundred. One hundred, okay. You felt it go up. Perfect. <laughs> All right. I can feel it glaring at me. <laughs> Mati, the board yes. is yours, man. I'll take Ayo Hudat for three hundred. All right. This Seattle born speed skater was the youngest national champion at age fourteen and went on to win eight total Olympic medals. Brinkley, I believe. I'm gonna go with Apollo Ono. You would be correct. What? Uh, For the yeah. record, she whispered to me and said, I don't actually know. <laughs> I didn't know he was from Seattle, but I do know Apollo Ono. Oh yeah, Thank Seattle you. legend. I do not know that one, actually. That's why I like him so much. Like, he's, he's cool, uh, but. Speed skater. Yeah, speed skater, one of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. So, props to him. He won with Shout out Seattle. Go. All right, Apollo Ono the Great. So, Brinkley, you again have the board. Dwayer, what would you like to do? I would like to take Cold Sport for 200, please. You got it. This sport was made famous by the movie following Jamaica's ideation. Mati. What is cool running? Right? What's the sport? Oh, bobsled. I said, what is bobsled? Brinkley. What is bobsled? You got it. What is what ball ball sled? What is this? <laughs> Man, I really am hitting rock bottom. <laughs> it's been a long night, my guy. It's all good. Yep. Okay. So that was cold sports for a two hundred. And Brinkley swooped in Can with I the get a win. Point for getting the movie right. No. Brinkley, what would you like to choose next? I would like. Let's go Cold Sports 300. All right, keep it rolling with Cold Sports. We were just talking about it, so see that. Whoa! Double Ungus, Double Ungus. The time has come. Are you ready to play Double Ungus, possibly to yes. double your points? Yes. All right, let's get it. What is this sport called? You have 10 seconds. You got it. Luge, baby. Oh, that says Luge. French. Oui, oui. I need to see. Luge, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are just a well-oiled machine here today. So Brinkley like doubles her points and now has is way ahead of the pack it's a well -oiled. with 2,500. 1,200, I mean. Math, man. What's okay. your major again? Um, not math. <laughs> All right. Double Ungus is off the board. I'm really glad you got that. I started questioning myself because I was like, oh my gosh, Good. is that skeleton? And then I was like, no, it is luge. Yeah, it was one of the three. I, I thought I was going to uh, catch someone up on that because they're all like kind of similar. But now you got it. Pro. All right. So with that win, still have the board. Brinkley's on a roll here. All right. We'll go Ayo Hudat for 100. All right. This WSU legend currently wears his jean shorts for the Philadelphia Eagles. Mati. Who is Daddy Minshew? You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Mati got that one. And okay. the board is yours, bro. Give me that ain't it, coach, for 200. All right. That ain't it, coach. This NFL coach got fired after insensitive emails were leaked by a corresponding investigation. In Who is John Gruden? Mati. <laughs> Who is John Gruden? You got it. I said that. <laughs> so. Yeah, okay. I remember what that one was. Did you see that one earlier and read it and you were waiting for it? No. Ooh. No, there's no <laughs> holes in this game. I don't think that could ever happen. Um, all right, Mati. Who, that ain't it, coach, for 300. All right. 
This retired baseball coach got a DUI and then promptly accepted a role as the manager of the Chicago White Sox. Madeline. Who is LeBron James? Yeah, <laughs> so close. <laughs> I love that answer. Okay. Um, That's not any it was Tony oh, I La Russa. Known that one. I can I can see. I could have told. Tony LeBron. Pretty close. I mean, come no, uh, Le James. La Russa James. La Russa James. La Russa James. La Russa yeah. James. La Russa. <laughs> Italian and not Italian. <laughs> hey yo. Too bad. Well, Larusa is the <laughs> DUI. Okay. Which one was that? 300. Okay. Nah, it's the big so so it's no the one board. got that one. What? Which means, Mati, the board is still yours. Okay. I'm going to go with don't quote me on this for 200. Okay. Let's see what don't quote me on this has. This quote machine of a boxer once said, I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Mati. Who is Mike Tyson? Incorrect. Okay. Who is Rocky Balboa? Balboa? Incorrect. It oh. was. Oh. I'm so disappointed. Who is, is Muhammad, Muhammad Ali? Ali? Oh, you got you got Baba though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it could have been a number Baba of people. Baba is the final set. Oh, uh, he was. What, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm so mean. I make medicine sick. I'm so mean. I can make medicine sick. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm not happy. Um, <laughs> Mati, okay. unfortunately, the board is still yours. Mutual hate for 100. Okay. Let's get it. This East Coast MLB team was stricken by the curse of the Bambino by their rivals. Who are, who are the Red Sox? You are correct, sir. I'll take mutual hate for 200. All righty. This player recently stated that the Chicago Bears fan base, to the Chicago Bears fan base, that he owns them. Who is the immunized Aaron Rodgers? That is correct. He is very immunized. He did his own research. <laughs> I'll take mutual aid for, uh, for 300, please. All righty. And I'll wait for you to say my name this time. This USA men's soccer player initiated the Dos Acero meme against rival Mexico. Mati. Who is Clint Dempsey? Incorrect. Oh. oh. I think that's um. it. Is it Landon Donovan? It is. Oh. Donovan. I just watched a great SB Nation video about that whole I thing. I just thought because Dempsey had, a, had, a, had, a, had quite the temper. Oh, yeah. Um. I don't know much about soccer, but... No, me neither, but uh, Landon Donovan, like, made rivals out of Mexico. He, like, revived our rivalry and uh, made the USA, like. I'll take mutual hate for 400 thing. again. All right. This annual rivalry game between Oklahoma and Texas football is named after a waterway. Mati. What is the Red River rivalry? You got it. Another 400 to Banana Guy. Why, why can't you do Banana Man? Huh? Like, Banana Man rolls I just kinda, off the it, tongue it, it a lot. Had already I'd already kind of term board, coined so. that, and then I'd already made stickers, and it was kind of a hassle. Fair enough. I'll take mutual hate for 500, though. Okay. Let's clear the board here. This country was once a part of India, but is now part of a toxic rivalry in cricket competition. This is more of a geography question than anything else. Mati. What is Pakistan? You are correct. Let's go. Let's go. He just cleared that entire... Yeah, seriously. Oh. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, he, this is a comeback of the century right here. Uh, I'll Not take that ain't it, coach, for 400. All right. This NBA coach got fired from the Kings for his players hating him after being a world champion player for the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> Could be LeBron. <laughs> She, 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 she got it. LeBron James? No. <laughs> what, is, what is, oh. hey, what is, what is, <laughs> what is, what is, what is LeBron James? What is LeBron James? <laughs> this is a great so Luke philosophical question. Luke Walton was uh, The Baba spoke. Yeah, it is Luke Walton. Oh, my 
His players really He's not a legendary him. player for the Lakers. I didn't say he was. Yes, you say so Oh, world champion. I misheard. That's on me. Yeah. Okay. No, he's oh, not I a legend in any way. Well, then I'll – okay. His, okay. his dad is. Right. I'm he's sorry. He's a legend for having room. a legendary dad. I would have gotten that one, but I got my stuff okay. confused. That was – That went – I'll take that ain't it for 500, though. The successful NFL coach got suspended for hitting his player on the head last season. Mati? Who is, is it Mike, no, it wasn't Mike Vable, it was Andy Reid? Mike Vable. I'll go with Mike Vable. Incorrect. Okay. Brinkley. <laughs> oh, nope, I know who it is. Uh -huh. Bruce yeah. Arians. It was the, yep. Yep. It went kind of under the radar because, like, did. he's Cause good. Because the Antonio Brown thing. <laughs> I red hit their player in the head, and I was going to go with um, the UW coach. <laughs> Jimmy Lake. Right, yeah, right, Jimmy right. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I oh, that would have been a better. That would have been a good one. Question, honestly. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll take don't quote me on that for 100. All right. Can someone else please get a question? This NBA star became a meme for simply stating, What? Swaggy P, Nick Young? Incorrect. A another legendary meme, though. Okay, so. Russell Westbrook? You got it. Yeah. It's one of my favorite memes. You can see where I got confused there, though, right? Yes. Yeah. But his was like, huh? But he, no, he didn't say he anything. He didn't say what. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's on me. Okay, uh, 100 was that? That's yeah. I feel like I should have someone else doing this, though. I don't get paid enough for this. You don't get paid at all. <laughs> exactly. Not enough. That's yeah, okay. Checked out. Uh, Brinkley, you have the board. I would like, um, let's go cold sports for 400, please. Okay. And this is the second to last question. What? Okay. Kind of forgot to mention that. Yeah, you didn't say that at all. I did not. All right. And I apologize. Thank you. But it is. Okay. So, y'all better, like, buckle up. Madeline, you got some catching up to Click the button, Vaughn. Zero for zero. I'm going in debt. If, yeah, <laughs> if one of these is LeBron, then. <laughs> Cold sports. Is open. <laughs> uh, this sport recently took a big hit with American star Michaela Schifrin crashing out of the Beijing Olympics. Mati? What is slalom? Downhill skiing. Slalom. I think technically, yeah. yeah. My, I said alpine skiing, but yeah. Okay, you got it. I'll take that one. All right. This is the last one, right? Last question, and I will have. Oh, that was 400. I need that. Okay, last question on the board here. Uh -huh. uh, uh, number man, do we have an update on the points in studio here? Yes, Matt is up seven minutes. Okay. <laughs> Give me a who dat for 500. All right, going for the big bucks here. This MLB player got kicked off of the Hall of Fame ballot for his unsavory comments about rioters. And that is a nice way of putting it. Mati. Roger Clemens. Who is Roger Clemens? Incorrect. No? I appreciate the effort with people saying, like, what is and who is. Like, I always hated that, personally. Oh, yeah? It's extra. Uh -huh. Is it Barry Bonds? Kurt Schilling. Oh. He made some... Really unsavory comments. Cool. Yeah, Care so to share? that is Ungus. Um, I want to say real quick thank you all for playing. Uh, Madeline, you are in a distant last, unfortunately. <laughs> Thanks um, for having me. Of course, it was our pleasure. I blame the buzzer personally. Um, but the two in the lead are going to have a chance in a second to figure out who is the champion. Well, so we'll get to that in one second because Ungus ain't over. It's never <laughs> over, baby. All right, let's get to it. Welcome to the ball box. Whoa, 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 to the ball box, yeah. Talking about sports and stuff, ball box. Come on now and sing it with me, Ball Box, yeah! Sports, sports, sports. All right. 
This one is for all the beans. Final Ungus. Mati is in the lead currently with 2,000 points. Brinkley is behind him with 1,300. I'm going to ask you to waver as many points as you'd like to try to see if you can come out on top with this final Ungus question. If you do not know what the question is about, you are trusting your own skill and knowledge of sports. Any sport. It could be polo. You just don't know. And that's the fun of it, for me at least. Mati, you're in the lead currently. How many points would you like to wager on this final Ungus question? Um, I'll wager 300 points. Okay, safe bet. Brinkley, what about you? I would like to wager all chips on the board my 1,300. Okay, I love it. Nothing left out on the, wait, no, nothing left out on the table. Everything you put left. all your chips on the table. Everything left Scratch out on the table. Scratch that. Everything on the table. That makes no sense. To try to come back and win this one. All right, so have it on the record. Mati, wagering 300. Was it 300? I have a question. Yeah, 300. Is it, is and it Brinkley is wagering 1,300. Wait, I also have a question. Okay, is it, is questions it a we both answer quick. at the same time, or is it a contest again? Yeah. Um, I didn't think that far ahead. Do we get 10 seconds, and then we both get we both, to say something? Yeah, we both get a chance. Or ah, get the whiteboards. No, it's fine. We can yes. say our answers. No, 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 because you do need a. Because if you say it at the How same about time, I just, you like, can just plug take my the ears other. and go, like, la, la, la. And nah, he nah, that's whack. Like, <laughs> yeah. But they can still go. Yeah, but they won't. But we won't like, you can get right the idea from someone. Welcome to the ball box. Whoa, 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 to the ball box, yeah. Talking about sports and stuff. Ball box. Come on now and sing it with me. Ball box, yeah.